I get really sick and tired of trying to tip out powder from, well, powdered tubs. Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome back to my YouTube channel. And if you're new, then welcome. My channel is all about makeup and beauty. So if you love those two things, then you're gonna love my channel. And you're especially gonna love this video because today I'm gonna to be doing a red lip makeup tutorial. As you can see, there's a couple of reasons for that. Number one is because I don't wear it often enough. And when I do wear it, I feel like, why don't I wear it that often? Because I love this look. Number two is more for you guys, because I know a lot of people get confused about how to do the rest of the face and just generally how to balance out the face when you've got so much going on on the lip. And also just how to perfect a red lip. And I also know there are some people out there who are blessed enough to be able to just throw on a red lip and leave the rest of the face bare and they just look amazing. I'm not one of those people and I'm sure a lot of you guys don't fall into that category either. So I'm gonna show you how to perfect that whole red lip look, how to get that perfect red lip and how to balance out the rest of the face so you can still get flawless skin and you can still wear some eye makeup, still maybe put some lashes on if you want to and still look great. So before we head into the video, if you like this video, then please give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and hit that bell button so that you never miss any of my videos. And you can catch me on Instagram where you can follow my stories for daily beauty news and you can also watch some of my PR unboxing, which is quite fun actually. Without wasting any more time, let's jump straight into the video. So I already have my skincare on. I'm gonna go straight in with the makeup because I've really been looking forward to doing this look. It's one of my favorite looks. I wear it once in a blue moon. I don't know why I don't wear it more often to be honest. But before I start with my makeup, I'm just gonna put my eye masks on. These are the Wishful Eye Lift and Snatch. Eye Lift? Yeah, Eye Lift and Snatch masks. So I'm gonna let these kind of like stay on while I'm doing my makeup, my kind of eye look really, because I wanna, I wanna do that before I put my foundation on. So this is just gonna sit still in this area and just let that get to work. First things first, I'm gonna use my concealer. I'm using the Too Faced Born This Way Multi-Use Sculpting Concealer today. It's super coverage, and I haven't used this in a while to be fair. My shade is Warm Beige, and I'm just gonna apply some of this to the back of my hand. Actually, I'm just gonna go straight in with it. So I'm gonna apply this on my lids. Basically, Nico is in the room with me today because Either he stays in his playpen and I don't really want to leave him in his playpen because he's just going to get bored or he sits in here with me because no one else is home and he's kind of like moving all over the place and like one minute he's here, next minute he's there and I'm just trying to make sure he doesn't go anywhere where there's probably makeup because he's white and it's going to show really easily on him and you might hear some random noises as well. So let's get in with buffing this concealer in. So I'm just going to start buffing this in. Now I'm gonna go in with my face powder. I'm using the Makeup Forever Ultra HD Setting Powder in Banana. Okay, so I'm just gonna kind of buff this into my eyelids before they start creasing. I'm just dusting away any excess with my Real Technique setting brush. This powder is really good, guys. I know I've probably gone on about it in other videos to you, but it is amazing. I have every shade within the range and I've been using it recently on my clients. I always feel like, you know, you know, if I love something, it's great, it's easy for me to tell you guys that I love it. But once I've used it on different skin tones and different skin textures and different finish, well, different finishes of makeup that people may want, then it gives me a better idea of just how versatile this powder is and just how well it works for every kind of skin tone. And I think it's probably been a good few months that I've been using it on numerous different clients and it is really good. It's one of those powders that even if you don't bake with it and you just dust it on, still gives you a really nice flawless finish. Now I'm moving on to the Natasha Denona Mini Sunset Palette and I'm using the shade Guava and I'm just gonna kind of dust this over my eye because what I want is a really nice kind of wash of color. So I'm gonna apply this just over my lid, but I'm gonna kind of take it out a little bit. See, there's something there, but it doesn't really look like there's much there. 
Now I don't usually like highlighter on the brow bone, but today I'm gonna to go for a very, very small amount. And I'm using the Tom Ford. Uh, this is the Skin Illuminating Powder Duo in Mood Light. And I'm using the kind of rose gold shade. I'm using this one here. I'm not using the really white one because I feel like the rose gold will complement my skin tone a little bit more. I'm just gonna apply a very small amount here. This is obviously before I'm doing my brows. Now I'm taking it right from my arch or what little of my arch that you can see. But um, it's basically about a quarter of the way in from the ends of the brow. So it shouldn't be in the middle, it should just be around this area here. What that does is actually helps to lift the brow area. But if you apply it there, it also helps to kind of drag it up depending on how you style your eyebrows. Now I'm gonna use the, which one is this? This is Dirty Mars from the Natasha Denona Sunset Palette. And I'm gonna use a very small brush. So I think I'm gonna go for the Huda Beauty Smoke and Smudge brush and use the smaller side of it. So my aim here is to not apply it all the way across the lash line. I want it to kind of like look really nicely, kind of like, like feline. So I'm gonna apply it here and then go slightly thicker at the end so it looks like it's kind of like more of that feline look but I also don't want it to look harsh so I'm going to blend it in so it looks really nice and smudged in on, around the edges. So I'm going to press this in. This is where I'm really glad I'm wearing these under eye masks because it's just going to pick up all of that eyeshadow that I'm dropping. So I'm going slightly thicker here. So you can see I've only actually applied it to one half of my lash line, the end, and I'm going to actually just go in but go thinner as I'm going in. This has gone very thin as I've gone into the inner corner. Now I know you can, I know you can really see the edges of this, or I'm not sure if you guys can, I can. I don't want it to look like a line, I want it to look very smudged in. So I'm just gonna flip the brush around and I'm just gonna kind of like make sure that it doesn't look harsh. So all I'm doing is dragging the brush side to side because to apply it, I pressed it in. So now I feel like I can't really see the lines. Now I'm going back in with the smaller one, I'm just applying a little bit more and then just buff it in with the other side there. Now I feel like there's a bit of shadow there, but it's not like obvious. We'll do the same on the other side. Now I wanna go in with a very kind of slightly darker shade. So I'm gonna use the, this is the Huda Beauty Wild Python palette and I'm using the darkest brown in here. And I'm gonna apply that with my Sigma Winged Liner E06 brush. And all I'm doing is pressing it in and I'm just gonna press that really close to the lash line. I'm not gonna go that far into my inner corner. And if I do, it's gonna be very, very thin, hardly anything. So I'm gonna start from this side first. Now I'm not really taking it right to the end of the lash line. I'm leaving a really small gap there because what I'm doing, I actually am taking it to the end of the lash line, but I'm not letting it touch the lash line closer to the end. So what you wanna do is you wanna keep the length the same, but you wanna lift that, you wanna lift it slightly. So for example, I'm sticking to my actual lash line here. As I come to the end here, I'm basically lifting it up. So I'm going a little bit higher than my lash line and that is what helps to give you that lifted look. So you know like a lot of people, I see a lot of tutorials where people show how to get, kind of get that really nice feline look and it can actually be really difficult to follow because you don't know the exact placement unless the person is literally telling you every single part, like what they're doing, then you're not gonna know. It's really difficult to actually get this. And that's probably why a lot of you kind of follow certain tutorials and you're like, how did my face not end up the same as hers at the end of it? And it's because you really, when you're doing something like that, you've gotta be really descriptive. And, I, and that's why my videos are a little bit longer, I feel, because I talk a lot through them, but what I'm saying is relevant. It's based on what I'm actually doing, you know? There's no point me saying, Oh, and then you go like this, and then you do this, 
and it's really kind of difficult to follow and you don't actually know what I did. So yeah, basically you're lifting it slightly higher and that's why that end becomes a little bit thicker. Now what we're doing, because we've applied three different colors so far, the main one is on the base of the lid and that's much lighter. It almost looks like a wash of color. And then we've got that medium brown, which kind of is the kind of, it, it smudges all in. <laughs> that totally came out wrong. Um, what I'm trying to say is we're creating a gradient effect and a gradient effect is created when you layer different shades of one particular color, different levels of it, and it goes kind of lighter to darker to darker to darker. And because your application is like, when you're applying that darkest shade, you're going smaller than what you did the, did apply the previous shade. So you can see a bit of that previous shade peeking out. That's what creates that, that kind of nice gradient effect. I'm just trying to make it really easy for you guys to understand because you know, I just think that it's just easier for everyone then, you know? So, okay, so as you can see, it's getting a little bit darker here. We don't have it there. Now, what I'm gonna do is just go super close to my lash line here. Like I'm all, almost going on the inside of the lash line there because I don't want it to look too heavy. Now I'm gonna get another brush. I'm just gonna get my, uh, this is the MAC, no it's not, it's the Sephora Pro Shader in 1.8. And there's nothing on this brush and I'm just kind of, buffing this brown shade just making sure it's kind of buffed in so when i say buffing i'm kind of like pressing and dragging and you drag in the direction that you want the color to go don't ever drag in any direction that you don't actually want that color okay can you see how we've already got that lifted effect there and it just looks a bit more feline now we're going to do the other side Now I'm gonna apply a little bit of liquid liner. I'm using the Ilia liquid liner. This is, it's just called the Clean Line Liquid Eyeliner. So all I'm doing is, I'm, I don't want that eyeliner look. So what I'm doing is just kind of, I'm adding further depth to my lash line. So I don't really want this to be visible. So I'm applying it super close to my lash line on the inner corner. So you can hardly see that, but from afar you can actually see that there's some depth there. So it just adds that kind of definition without it looking like you're wearing eyeliner. Now I'm just kind of applying it super close, almost tight lining. So what I'm doing is applying it really like kind of in between my lashes so that it doesn't look like I'm wearing eyeliner, but it makes my lash line look a bit defined. Right, now that my eyes are kind of semi done, I'm gonna move on to my base. I don't really like putting my eyelashes on before I've done my foundation because I feel like if I put my lashes on now and then I do my foundation and then I dust off all that powder, it kind of goes, leaves a layer on top of my lashes and then it just looks weird. So um, I'm gonna move straight on to foundation application. So now I am going to take these off. Oh, it feels nice and smooth. These are really good. These are some of my favorite eye masks. I think that they're so good. They're better than those jelly ones that you get because I can't stand them. They're always just like flopping around everywhere and ugh, I just don't like the feeling. I'm gonna use my Too Faced Born This Way concealer. Now I'm going all in. Not that I usually don't really apply this much concealer, but um, I really want that kind of nice um, flawless finish because I feel like when you're wearing a red lip, well, I don't feel like you have to wear it this way, but I really personally love it when the skin looks completely flawless. So like when it's just really nice and clean and then you have this like clean red lip, I love that. Now I'm gonna use my Cover FX G Medium 2 Concealer and I'm just applying this to certain areas. I'm gonna use my Charlotte Tilbury Hollywood Complexion Brush and I'm just buffing this in. I literally spent last week i think i spent two days in the pool because i had family over and we just ended up doing a staycation at the same hotel as them and i loved it because i was just in the pool all day and i really tanned a lot and i love it because i don't usually get like i don't usually have time to do like that kind of stuff so it was really nice to be able to just chill out and also get a tan i just think i just think everyone looks good with a tan so because of my tan, 
I'm keeping everything quite warm, but I do want to highlight certain areas. Like I don't want it to look completely kind of flat, you know? So because of that, I'm going to use my NARS. Which one is this? I'll put it on the screen. And I'm going to use this as a radiant concealer. And I'm literally just going to apply a small amount here on top. I was like, what is that noise? And it's Nico. He's sleeping, but he's dreaming. So he's like twitching. Oh, so cute. I hope he's having a good dream. So that other concealer I applied, I know you're probably wondering, well, why did you put the other one on? The other concealer is really close to my skin color. So it just helps to conceal the area and get rid of any kind of discoloration. And although my foundation is also gonna do that, I just want that little bit of extra coverage. And that Cover FX concealer is not too heavy. That's what I love about it. It's quite light. Um, and then this Radiant concealer, uh, the Radiant Creamy Concealer by NARS, I like it to kind of just brighten the area a little bit. So that's why I'm just applying it to the areas that I just want to kind of highlight really. Now we are going to buff in that under eye concealer. And I'm just literally buffing this in. Guys, I was trying to find something to watch last night and I'm a major like movie addict, I'm not gonna lie. I love movies. I just love how you just get lost in the movie. It's just, I just love it. I could watch movies all day, every day. I found this movie on Netflix called He's All That. Do you remember back in the day? Let me know in the comments below if you remember this movie, She's All That. I can't remember the actor and actress. It was such a good movie. It was just a really like feel good movie. Don't get me wrong, I know there are like some major good movies out there. I'm just talking about a feel good movie, you know, where it's just like a bit more relaxed. Um, well, this is kind of like updated version of that. But I think it is a slight follow on because the original actress in She's All That was in this movie and she's playing the mum. And the main actress in this is Addison Rae, that uh, TikTok person. Um, so yeah, I think she's done pretty well. She's in a movie now, so good for her. She did okay actually, she was pretty good. Considering that's her first movie, I thought she did pretty well. I mean, I watched the whole movie and I quite liked it. It was just like a really chilled movie, you know? You know when you're like still on your phone and you're just watching a movie in the background? That kind of movie, it's not like, it doesn't pull you in. Um, but it's a good movie. Ooh. Okay, I'm gonna use the Huda Beauty Tan Tour in medium. And I'm literally just gonna draw this in to the areas that I want to sculpt. I'm using the Makeup Forever 226 brush and it's just a really kind of basic concealer brush. So I'm just, I'll tell you why I'm doing it in this, these areas. You've probably seen me do this in other videos as well already, but I will tell you again in case you're new and you haven't seen my other videos. Now I want to make my lips look a little bit bigger. That's all I do. A little line there, a little line there. And now let's do the I'm gonna go in with my Charlotte Tilbury Hollywood complexion brush again this is a different brush because I keep one for lighter shades and another one for darker shades I'm gonna go in and start buffing this in so I want to keep the shapes the same because what I've done here I want to slim down my forehead area a little bit as in like, you know, squish it a little bit so that I look slimmer. And then I want to define my cheekbones and I put it quite high because when you start blending, depending on what, what direction you're blending in, like I'm, I'm gonna blend kind of almost a little bit down so I know it's gonna get, it's gonna be in the right area then and I want more definition in that top part there just to give me higher cheekbones. Then I've got this section here, which is just my jawline. I didn't wanna go OTT with it so that's why I've only put a little bit. Plus it spreads when you do it anyway. And then obviously this bit here and this bit here creates a shadow making it look like you've got more of a pouty lip. And then obviously we've got the nose contour, which by the way, I'm gonna do a more dedicated video for you on uh, nose contouring how to contour a bulbous nose. So yeah, I'm gonna start blending this in. I'm going into the hairline here because I want that to leave kind of like a nice shadow. So you can see that it's gone into the hairline. This contouring cream is very good. I don't often use contouring creams. I usually use concealers because it just gives me that extra coverage at the same time, but this is a good one. 
Always take this into the neck area. Like don't take it upwards. Okay, switching, uh, flipping the brush around now so I can use the smaller side. Now you've got to make sure that you blend properly because you don't want it to look obvious. And obviously we're going to go on top with foundation, but still you want to make sure there are no harsh lines because sometimes those harsh lines can still come through foundation. So it should, at the end, look like a shadow there. That's the whole point. I'm dragging this down the sides of the nose. So I'm going in with my Tarte Face Tape Foundation. This is one of my favorite foundations. I really love this foundation. This color is 47S. I'll be honest, I would mix a small amount of this into my other foundations, depending on what one I decide to use, because I love this color. But on its own, it's usually a little bit too dark for me, but because I'm tanned at the moment, I can use this. So I'm going all in with this one completely. We're gonna start buffing this in, just taking my beauty blender, buffing it into the back of my hand, and then I'm gonna buff onto my skin. I'm starting with the forehead and making sure that's nicely covered. Yeah, this is where I'm gonna go along the under eyes now. But I take it up along the side of the nose first, and then I drag it out. So you can see I'm going in the same direction as the highlight contour that I've applied. I feel like when your base is done, that's when you can really see that kind of eye look that you've created. You know, obviously, if I'm not putting much eye makeup on, then I'll do my base first. But if I've got, you know, a lot of eyeshadow going on, then I will always put that on first. I feel like my base is done nicely now. I'm happy with it. I love that I'm darker. I love that I can use this foundation in its full form, if that makes sense, because usually I have to mix it in. Let's go in with my powder now. I'm gonna go back to the same powder, the Makeup Forever Ultra HT Setting Powder. I'm just getting rid of these lines with the tip of the sponge, and then I'm gonna go straight in with this powder. I'll tell you why. Let me just do this, otherwise it's not gonna be as effective. Okay. Okay, because I needed to make sure there are no lines there, because if I if there are lines there, then when I put that powder on top, basically what I'm doing is setting those lines and you're just gonna see them and I've just enhanced them and it's gonna look awful. So you've got to make sure there are no lines there so that you can set smoothness. Okay, and now we're just gonna set this area here. I get really sick and tired of trying to tip out powder from, well, powdered tubs. So I just put it in, into my hand because it really annoys me. Someone needs to come up with something better. It's actually pretty messy putting it into the lid. I don't like that idea. So I just tip it out into my hand, but then it's annoying because it goes everywhere. Like there's gotta be something someone can do. Now I'm gonna get my Makeup Forever 122 brush. I'm just gonna dust off all this powder. Eyebrows. Now I'm excited about this because I'm trying something new out today. I'm using the Makeup Forever. What what is this? This is the Aqua Resist Brow Definer, and it's it looks super thin. I love it, and I really love the Makeup Forever eyebrow shades that they have because I like. Even though my hair is slicked back at the moment, when it's down and it's properly styled, my color is actually a ash blonde. So at the moment it looks dark because my roots in. I'm transitioning at the moment because I had it colored and I needed it to be more ashy. So I'm just waiting a little while so I can go get back to that. Yeah, I'm gonna use two different colors. I'm using a shade called Deep Blonde 20 and a medium brown 40. I'm gonna use the lighter shade on the front section of my brow and then the darker shade along the rest of the brow. So I'm gonna start with the darker shade because I always like to do the uh, main bulk of the brow first and then I love doing the front section last. So I think I'm gonna just shape it first and it's a really nice pencil. First time I'm using this. Okay, so you can see I've got that nice clean line underneath. Now I'm gonna start, and I'm leaving the front section. I've got this little gap here, which I'm just gonna fill in. Now I'm gonna start drawing in the hairs. Okay, I'm gonna do the other side before I move on to the other shade.
Now I'm gonna go in with the lighter shade and I'm just gonna start drawing in some hairs. Okay, now I'm gonna go over with the Makeup Forever Aqua Resist Brow Fixer. This shade is 20, which is a deep blonde. I think I could potentially go with the one lighter than this. Yeah, I do think so, but it's too late. So I'm just gonna go with this. Okay, now it is for my favorite part. We're gonna finish off the eyes and then we're gonna move on to the red lip. I'm gonna go back in with my Tom Ford highlighter that I used on the brow bone, and I'm gonna actually apply that in to the inner corner of my eye, but not. I'm gonna be very strategic with what, how I place it, and I'll tell you why. So I'm using a flat brush. I don't actually know what this brush is because the names kind of come off of it, um, but it's kind of like a flat dome it's a flat brush so it's a short it's like a shader brush it's a shader brush so i'm going to use that same highlight and i'm going to apply it just here so you can see i've gone a little bit further in because i want to just open up this area and then i'm going to take it up here just a small amount and then i'm going into the crease here only about a quarter of the way so i just this is going to just help brighten up that area there and do the same here there you go I'm also gonna just bring this a little lower here. Only a very small amount. Next, I'm gonna go back into that shade Guava from the Nat Nat Natasha Denona palette. And I'm gonna apply this to my lower lash line. I'm using the uh, Sephora 18 brush and I'm just kind of buffing this into my lower lashes. Because it's quite a light color, there's not much you need to like do. It's just gonna kind of blend itself in. I'm gonna just drag that out a little bit there. Same on this side. Now I'm gonna apply my MAC pencil. It's the MAC Studio Chromographic Pencil. This is NW25 stroke NC30 and I'm applying it to my waterline. So I'm gonna make sure that I don't kind of touch any lashes because it can go really weird and then it doesn't come off. I'm just gonna drag my eye down a bit. Okay, I don't wanna to apply too much because I actually don't like it when it's too light, just very lightly. This is gonna to help to make the eyes look a little bit bigger, just a bit more brighter as well. I'm doing it more so for the brightness than the uh, making it look bigger. The reason being is because I feel like when you're wearing red lips, you want that bright eyed look. You don't want it to look like it's too dark. Okay, let's curl the lashes. I'm just gonna use, I'm using my Kevin Oqua Lash Curler because it's amazing. Now I'm gonna use my Ilia Mascara. It's the Limitsless Lash Mascara. Haven't used this before, so let's see what this like. What this, let's see what this like. Let's just see what this is like because I'm gonna put false lashes on anyway. I feel like this is a very kind of daytime mascara, which is kind of perfect for under false lashes, so. Okay, lashes. So I've just applied some glue on the strip of my lash just a really small amount. I'm gonna let that dry for a little bit because I, you should never really apply it straight away. You should let it dry for just a little bit. And I'm just gonna place this right onto my lash line. As you guys know, I always stick it down in the center and then stick the outer corner in. Okay, lashes are on. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is get my Sigma E06 brush again, and I'm gonna go into the really dark brown shade in the NARS Skin Deep palette, and it's like a really dark chocolatey brown, and I'm basically going to apply that like almost like just at the end here, just to lift the eye a little bit, but also just give it a little bit more of a wing without it looking like eyeliner. So I don't really want to bring it too far out. Yeah, that's kind of what I'm looking for. Can you see that it's slightly lifted now? It's always easier to do this bit after your lashes are on. That's it, it's looking better now. Okay, so 
So that's kind of rough, but what I want to do is go back in with my Sephora Pro Shader brush in 18. Nothing on the brush, and I'm just going to like kind of keep it all in the same place, but just buffing it. So I'm kind of, again, buffing is pressing and dragging. So I'm just taking off any excess because I don't want to drag any extra colour around. There, that is the kind of look that I'm talking about. I just want it to not look like eyeliner. I just want it to look like it's fading out, but also not too thick, you know? Now I'm gonna apply my mascara on my lower lashes. I'm just gonna go in with the same one, the Ilia mascara. And I'm just gonna apply this on my lower lashes. I don't really want it to look so perfect underneath. I just want kind of messy lower lash that's why I drag it side to side I'm actually looking for a really nice warm bronzer so what I want to use is my Fenty Sunstalker in Private Island and I'm going to use my uh, Hourglass Ambient Lighting brush which is amazing guys this brush is just so good like the shape of it the way that it fits into the contours of the face is just the perfect size so I'm going to use this I'm using the bigger side and I'm going to just start sculpting so i'm going to keep this around here so i'm going along from the top of the ear okay so i'm keeping this matte and i'm going around where i contoured around the hairline by the way as well because i want to go over with a slight shimmer bronzer just to kind of give me that really nice radiant glow but i didn't want to contour with that shimmer bronzer first because i feel like when i'm contour when i'm sculpting my face with a bronzer i need to use a matte shade first in order for it to really do its job to create those contours and those shadows in all the right places if i use a, a bronzer which has a shimmer in there to sculpt that isn't really going to give me the same effect because those particles which are shimmer the light will bounce off of them and it isn't doing the same job as what a matte bronzer would do when it's sculpting. So that's why I just go over afterwards just with a hint of a shimmer bronzer so that I get that kind of effect that I want. But that isn't really what's doing that sculpting for me, if you see what I mean. So I'm going to just apply this just on the jawline where I did initially with the contouring and sculpting. And I'm also going to do my nose. So I'm going to get my Fenty 200 brush and I'm just going to do a little kind of V shape here and then go down the sides of the bridge of the nose. I'm going to use the Laura Mercier translucent powder. It's the loose setting powder in Glow, which is a, it's a medium deep color. So it has a slight sheen to it. So that's where I'm going to go back in with the same brush and I'm just going to apply this just along here. You can see, do you see what I mean? It has that sheen to it. So if you apply that everywhere, it's just gonna look weird. Okay, I feel like that's enough of that. Okay, I'm gonna use the Tom Ford highlighter again. I'm just gonna apply the kind of rose gold shade just on my nose here. Just a small amount. And that was, I don't know what that brush is, guys. You just need any dome brush. And I'm also going to use my Zoeva 134 brush and the same highlight and just kind of apply it along here and here. Now for the best part, the red lips. Okay, I'm gonna use my Dior Lip Contour Pencil in 999. And this is a really good red. I love this red. I really love the red lip when it looks very matte. It doesn't look so creamy, like almost like powdery. I love that look. I wanna go for that kind of velvet finish on the lips, which isn't overly, I, I like it to have that kind of slight brightness to it too. Okay, so when it comes to lining your lips with a red lip pencil you might want to kind of like go over with a slightly darker shade around the edges which i'm going to see if i need to do that after but i'm going to show you just the straightforward red lip first and then i'm going to show you how you can kind of define the lip line so that the lip lip line looks a tiny bit darker so we're going to go in and start on the top lip so i'm going to start with this center bit here So you can see I've done that, uh, the kind of V shape there. It's not really a V shape on me because I don't like there to be too much of a dip there. So I like it kind of straight, not too straight. So that's why it is that way on me. 
you can follow your natural lip line if you want, but I like to go just a tiny bit above. And then when it comes to these bits here, I stay on my natural lip line. So I always go a little bit higher in the center. So higher on the upper lip line and lower on the lower lip line. So I'm gonna now just draw the edges and finish it off and then um, go through it with you. Okay, so my lip line is done. Now I'm gonna start dragging this lip line in. So I'm literally just dragging it inwards from the lip line. Not all the way in, but just a little bit. Now what this does is it stops your lipstick and lip liner looking disconnected. And it also lasts longer. I'm gonna go in with my lipstick. I'm using the Dior Rouge Dior lipstick in 999. This is a really nice color. I'm just gonna go straight in with this lipstick. Now, this is a pretty bright lip. I personally love it. It's like a proper true red. Now, what I want to do is just darken it a very, very small amount so it's not so in your face. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my dark brown, which is from Fenty, the Stunner Lip Paint, and it is Unveil. I'm going to put the tiniest amount on the back of my hand. I've literally just put a dot, and I'm going to get my lip brush. I'm just going to use the other end of the... Uh, your lip brush from the pencil. I'm gonna put a very small amount of this lipstick on the back of my hand as well. And I'm basically mixing the tiniest amount of the brown stunner lip paint into this red. And I'm coating the lip brush. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go around, I'm literally just going around the edge of the lip. Can you see how that has already just given it, just given it more depth? And this is my finished look. So there you go, that's my tutorial done. I hope you've enjoyed it and I hope that you love this look as much as I do. If you have any questions at all, then please let me know in the comments box below because I always reply. I've also made it super easy for you guys to purchase any of the products that I've used. So just head over to my description box below and you can click on the links and it will take you straight to it. Now, as always, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and hit the bell button so that you never miss a video. Until the next video, take care and I'll see you soon.